How's it going? Coming at you with another video. Uh, we're doing a PSA submission today. Uh, PSA just opened up for the month of June. A $15 card, um, 1990s and newer, so modern cards uh, up to a $200 value or $199. So um, I've had a stack of modern cards that I've just kind of been waiting on. I got 25 of them here. Um, didn't really want to do it at the $19. I um, was ready to pull the trigger, but I was just going to wait till June. Um, and if they hadn't run a special yet, I was going to do it at that. But uh, got lucky, got a special. I uh, got four bucks off a card, so 24 cards. It's 100 bucks off right there. So uh, perfect timing. I have a stack of vintage that I'm also going to get um, submitted here. I think I got about 20 cards there. Um, again, just kind of waiting. Um, the regular value submission, the bulk submission, is you can go up to $499. Uh, with this special, technically you can only go up to $199. There are cards in here that I do believe are higher than $199, um, but usually they're pretty pretty gracious with that. Um, if anything, they're just going to upcharge me, so um, not a big deal. I always kind of aim lower. Um, I hear some people say not to do that because they think that you get worse grades, but I really don't think the guy grading the cards really cares um, how much PSA is getting paid in, in the long term. They're going to give it the same grade, so... Um, without any further ado, we'll start going through these. Um, most of these I expect tens on. There are a couple in there that I more or less are expecting a nine. Um, there are some minor imperfections on a few of these cards, um, but uh, I still wanted to submit them because there is a chance they might get a ten. If they do get a ten, it's a huge boost, and a nine is still uh, going to make money or break even on these. So we'll get through these. Uh, first one is a twenty twenty. Panini Prism, Desmond Bain, red, white, and blue. Um, those little spots right there are just dust on the penny sleeve on the inside. But I did take all these um, as I got them prepped, uh, wiped down with microfiber, um, hit all the edges, backs, everything like that. So um, this one I am expecting a 10 on. Uh, I bought a lot of these cards raw. Um, some of these I did pull. This one is a perfect example. Desmond Ritter, it's a black and white, this is a variation image, um, silver prism, so kind of a hard card to hit, not a super highly sought after rookie, but um, good centering, good looking card, I think this one did have a little marking down the bottom, um, but hoping it's still not enough to take it down a grade. Um, with how bad the centering usually is on prism, I was uh, real happy about this one actually, so. 2022 Prism Desmond Ritter. Next one, uh, just recently hit this in the blaster boxes I opened. Um, this is not a 2023 Bowman Chrome, or 2023 Bowman blaster, uh, but the chrome variation here. Uh, and this is How You Lee, I believe it's pronounced. Um, for the Phillies, this is a gold, true gold refractor to 50. Um, and he is actually pretty sought after in that, uh, that organization. Um, so 20 years old, uh, up and comer, supposedly pretty good. Um, his auto sell pretty well and this card looked perfect. So, uh, hoping for a 10 on this one. Uh, I know a lot of these cards kind of had print lines going down the middle, but this one seemed pretty dang good. So hoping for the best on that. Um, hoping to really bump that value up on this. True golds always sell really, really well. So... <laughs> This one is a base, 2021 Bowman's Best, Julio Rodriguez. This is the set that was kind of at the uh, at the center for the whole rookie debacle, rookie debate of what's a true rookie. They're saying this is technically supposed to be his true rookie card, but I mean everybody kind of considers the tops a true rookie card. But I think uh, for what this one sells for, it makes sense to send it in card itself looked really good centering looks good so if they can get a 10 definitely a big boost he's obviously not having a great start to the year not terrible but not what uh, everyone was expecting so uh, next up we got 2022 tops formula one sapphire and so lewis hamilton uh, sepia variation um I believe the centering is pretty decent on it. I, I don't really know the top to bottom centering. It's kind of tough. Uh, I picked these up at a card show. I picked this uh, Lewis or um, Verstappen and one of the card I'm 
don't really remember who else it was, but I got a real good deal on these. So um, this one's serial numbered out of 100. Lewis Hamilton, obviously, seven championships. Um, he has the record in F1. Verstappen, obviously, chasing him, but anything Lewis Hamilton and Verstappen sells really well. So uh, Pack pulled this one. This one is a 2022. Panini Prism green variation of Brees Hall. He had a great start of the year this last year for his rookie year and then got injured. I uh, believe he tore his ACL. Um, but I really like the color match green. It's not numbered or anything, but that color match green, if that hits as a, as a gem mint, that should sell pretty well to a Jets collector. Possibly a little whitening down there on that corner. Um, again, hoping for a 10. But even as a nine, that one will bring a little bit more money than it would raw. So, Brees Hall had him on my fantasy team last year. He uh, he was doing great. He was actually leading my team in rushing, and then that happened, and my whole team unraveled. So, it was kind of injury after injury, unfortunately. But uh, this one is the base 2021 optic Trevor Lawrence. Um, a really well centered card just kind of been sitting in a box really didn't have any plan for it but Trevor Lawrence prices just keep kind of creeping up um, especially after this last year with the playoff run so getting this back right before the NFL season will be a good time to flip it uh, if I can pull a 10 that's easily a three figure card so that would be nice um, expecting a 10 on that one too no surface issues none of that so uh, this one's kind of a flyer I uh, wasn't sure whether to send it or not, but actually the prices on uh, Matty Benier's cards are pretty nice. So uh, obviously they got bounced um, from making the playoffs, but up and coming team, uh, real good player, probably the top rookie this last year for the uh, Kraken. So hopefully this one gets a 10. Um, his prices are just going to keep going up. I don't see why they wouldn't unless he gets injured, but real good player, real young. Um, this is the base Dazzlers card, um, but even the Dazzlers pull a lot of money for him, so I'm going to send that one off. It looked pretty pretty good, so hoping for a 10. This one could be a 9. Um, the centering on these are always so dang hard. Um, I can never really tell. I got lucky on a, on a few of them I sent in. Um, the ones that I think are off-centered seem to get 10s. The ones that I think are centered seem to get 9 sometimes, so I don't know. But this is the uh, 2020 OPG Platinum. Caprice off Rainbow. He continues to just keep excelling, just crushing for the wild. Um, so I'm hoping he has another big year this next year. And if this can hit a 10, that'll probably be going right to the PC. Um, really like that card. Pick this one up raw, um, just on purchases. So this one I hit out of uh, what was it? Out of 20, 2022 archives. This is a Seiyo Suzuki, um, the black international signing. The edges looked so good on this one. I, right when I saw it, I was like, ooh, that one might be a grader. Um, backs all look good. This is serial number to 99. These black cards are always so hard to, uh, hard to grade. They always get chipped up sides and stuff like that. But this one looked really, really good and continues to be a good player for the Cubs. So say a Suzuki say you get a 10 all right got some older cards coming up um, the older cards obviously a lot more issues on them just from being around longer people mishandle them some of these guys might not have been expected to be great players or anything like that cards might have been in common boxes or just kind of tossed aside um, as they were collected and then they kind of resurface when people start putting on Hall of Fame tracks and stuff like that. So this one is the 2013 Topps Chrome X-Fractor DeAndre Hopkins rookie card. Centering looked real, real good. Maybe a little bit light on the top compared to the bottom, um, but it's pretty close. Surface-wise, I felt like it was pretty solid. Corners were pretty good. Maybe that top right one might have a little bit of a ding, but nothing that... Uh, I haven't seen be a 10 on some previous cards. So, again, expecting a 9 probably on this one, but if I get a 10, it'd be huge. DeAndre Hopkins. 
He's a uh, he's gonna get shopped around. Might be on a new team here this next year. More than likely, we got a new team, but um, that'll obviously bump his prices too. Whenever you get traded to a new team, those collectors obviously start trying to purchase up some of your cards, um, and you'll get a little bit of a spike. So, uh, if you've been watching some of the other channels or some of the other videos, uh, you'll see I just got this one in the mail not too long ago. This one is a 2015 Bowman Chrome insert, prime position auto, and that is serial number 250. This card looked real clean. A little bit of corner issues on the back, but they can be a little bit more lenient on back corner issues. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit. But sick looking card. Uh, front centering looked really good. Kind of a thicker, thicker stock card. These insert ones are. But real nice looking auto on that one. Hoping that one gets a 10. Um, expecting a 9 on that one, but hoping for a 10. Uh, opened this one on Christmas. Actually came out of, a, I believe it was a fat pack. This is a Jalen Suggs Signature Series out of 2021 Optic. This one is serial numbered out of 25. Pink variation. Pretty sweet hit out of a uh, out of a fat pack. Back centering's a little bit off. Front centering looked real good. Auto looks nice. So hoping for a, hoping for a ten on that one. What's that going on out there, Dixie? Dog's acting a little goofy out there. Next up. Oh, 2022 Upper Deck Matt Boldy that's a Young Guns French variation Boldy just signed a nice uh, 7 year extension on his contract 7 year $49 million so getting this French variation I bought it early early this last season he had a real good season 30 plus goals uh, I don't remember exactly what his goal total was but uh, when Kaprizov went out Boldy just went on a tear. I think he had like over 15 goals in a month or something like that. It was something crazy, but this card looked real good. I bought it for like, I don't know, it was low. I bought this card low. Like I want to say like 20 bucks, if even. I'd have been like 15 bucks. Super good deal on it. Uh, if that one can hit a 10, obviously the upper decks are always a little, a little iffy. The corners are never perfect, it never seems, but I feel like they grade those a little bit more lenient than others next up Manny Machado from 2015 um, Tops Finest sorry 2013 Tops Finest this is a auto refractor all the ref all the autos were refractors that year so they're all gonna have that refractor look to them um, got a little line on the case that's not on the card same with that fingerprint so again did a good job prepping all these, making sure all the fingerprints were wiped off, all the little edge issues were, were kind of brushed off. Um, and this was a nice looking card. These finest cards had a little bit of uh, like pitting issues every now and then on them, um, but it wasn't too bad. Corners all look good. Centering, I can never tell on cards like this, so hopefully the centering's good. I'll let them decide that, but that's a nice card. Hoping for 10, more than likely it'll be closer to a 9. But um, These ones came out of last year's Bowman Mega Boxes. These are the Mojo Refractors. I got two of them coming up here out of 2022 Bowman. This was a Curtis Mead Auto. Um, not a first Bowman, uh, but that Mojo Refractor. I had a good series of uh, hits out of Mega Box. I was hitting autos like one every two or three boxes. It was pretty crazy. I don't think the odds are that good, but I got pretty lucky, and then the names were pretty solid. So, got this one was Curtis Mead. Hoping for a 10 on that one. The other one was big name, James Wood. He is uh, over on the Nationals now. He was part of the Soto trade, um, but he is a big man, and he crushes the ball. What is he? He's like 6'7", 240. He's a huge dude. Um... So a lot of hype behind him, a lot of big expectations. Hoping for a 10 on that one, too. Next one was a pack pull. This was Wander Franco out of 2022 Top's Finest. 
Um, this was the sky blue refractor out of 300. I hit um, this, the next card. I hit a uh, Julio refractor. I hit just tons of great color and stuff out of that box, and I think that was the one I had. Uh, I got a Hoy Park auto in the first box and a Hoy Park gold auto in the second box. I was just like, all right. But uh, Wander having a great year. Um, everyone was a little down on him last year, so I actually besides pulling this one, I've been picking up some of his cards um, just as singles. So uh, he keeps continuing to crush. He's just going to keep having uh, higher values, and his card price are just going to keep going up. But this card was really nice, super clean. Uh, hoping for a 10 on that one. Next one is the Alec Thomas. Um, this is the Blue Aqua Vapor Wave. Um, kind of got that like 80s look to it. That one's serial numbered at 250. He also crushes, unfortunately, he crushes for uh, Arizona. But with Drew Jones coming up, I mean, they have some real good young talent. Hopefully that team starts performing. Um, small market baseball, so their card prices are never crazy good. Um, but if they ever get traded, some of the bigger market teams go start going after some of these guys from these small market clubs. Um, and his price will obviously increase if he goes to one of these bigger market teams, like a Boston or New York or anything like that. So Alec Thomas, high on him. I've been high on him for the last couple of years. Um, he kind of flies under the radar, but I think he's a good investment down the road. Uh, next one is out of the holiday boxes. I ripped this one on the channel. Um, this one is the Bobby Witt. This is out of 2022 at Topps Holiday. Um, this is the red metallic variation. Serial numbered out of 99. Really nice card. Centering looks good. It is a paper stock, so um, the nice thing with the colors and stuff like that is even the corners are hard to see if you kind of have a ding corner. Each corner actually has white snowflakes on each corner so kind of hide some of the imperfections and stuff like that surface wise card looked great centering looked good on the back uh, I'm hoping for a 10 on that one he hasn't had a great year this year but people are still real real high on Bobby Witt not a terrible year just not what his expectations have been so next up we got 2021 Bowman Chrome so I opened up a box of Bowman Chrome, uh, 2021 and 2022, because you had to buy them as a set. Um, got lucky in my 2021 with a Nick Gonzalez Gold Auto to 50. On-card autos, um, they obviously don't fetch nearly like a regular Bowman or first Bowman or something like that, but Bowman Heritage, um, still a real nice product, real good looking cards, on-card auto. Um, so if this can pull a nice uh, grade, should have some pretty solid value. Nick Gonzalez, a stud for the uh, Pirates organization. So I think he'll be up uh, in the big leagues sooner than later. Say his age on here. No. I know he's still pretty young, but Nick Gonzalez kind of been in the products. I don't remember when he had his first bowman, but he's been around for a little bit. Um, his stuff seems to sell pretty well. So Next one is a card that I bought and cracked. This was out of an HGA case. Um, nine fives on HGA. There's no value in an HGA um, slab. Uh, so I actually got this for what I feel is under value. Bought it before the season, um, before he obviously went on a tear. Still leads the league, I believe, in uh, batting average. Just an awesome player. This is rookie card out of Topps Chrome Update. Um, and this is the X Fractor. So if this can pull a 10. Serial number 125. This is really going to jump up its value. So, a lot of people during 2022, or sorry, 2020 and 2021, were, since you couldn't submit with PSA, BGS was, was shut down, um, SGC kind of started bringing it back. People started going through them, but a lot of people started going through CSG and also HGA and some other real obscure uh, graders. So, HGA had a lot of uh, issues with their grading, really got dragged for quite a while, and their value and, I mean, any respectability of that company has kind of gone out the window. So I feel like they're pretty much completely falling off the radar, uh, but I was able to get this card in a slab for a good price. 
HGA slabs are not fun to crack open. So I uh, did a good job getting that one out, um, but it was a terrible slab to crack. Um, hoping for a 10 on that one. Real nice looking card. This one is out of the 2022 Bowman Heritage. This is a uh, Luis Angel Acuna, so Ronald Acuna's brother. Um, this one's a gold lava, I believe it is. Um, and then this one is serial number 50 as well. Nice looking card right there. Yeah, I believe it's like gold Ray Waver gold aqua I don't remember exactly which one so um, real good card uh, I have his first Bowman auto in purple um, which I really like so he's got a lot of hype hopefully he sees the big show here soon um, hopefully he can be anything like his brother if he is I mean his cards are gonna go to the moon so here we throw that one in there um, hoping for a 10 those uh, Bowman Heritage cards are real clean cards, so everything looked good on that one. Next, we got a Connor McDavid out of 2020 um, Upper Deck SP. This is the Authentic Profiles insert. Um, this one's serial numbered out of 2,299. McDavid's just a beast, so anything serial numbered that looks good, uh, in my opinion, is a good candidate his to send in. He is going to challenge for some major major hall of fame like records in the nhl this guy is just a freak so his stuff is just just gonna keep going up 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 in my opinion unless heaven forbid he gets some sort of injury or something like that but um boy do you have like 140 some points this last season um besides like gretzky lemieux um yager some of those guys, I mean, we haven't seen this talent come around in a long, long time. And uh, between him and Dreisaitl, I mean, they are just unbelievable. It's it's something else to watch, too, uh, if you ever get the chance to watch an Oilers game. Those guys are just phenomenal. The things that this guy can do and how he sees the ice and how he controls the puck is just nuts. So um, send this one in. Looked real good. No issues with the corners. Um... The edges on these always seem a little iffy, so hoping for a 10, wouldn't be disappointed with a 9. Um, like I said, anything McDavid is phenomenal. Um, he's above and beyond what Trout is to baseball or anything like that, so uh, just a freak of a player. It's pretty awesome. Uh, last card is 2020 Upper Deck. This is Jake Ottinger. Um, he's a goalie for Dallas. Um, had a little bit of a rough patch here this uh, postseason. Um, was a rookie this last year. Played, actually two years ago, majority of the time this last year, and this year he was a clear starter for, for Dallas. Real bright future, real young kid. He's actually from Minnesota, so like that about him. Um, he's a Lakeville guy. So South Metro, got to support the uh, locals, even though I don't like Dallas. I don't like the fact that uh, the Wild always lose to them. <laughs> don't like the fact that it used to be a franchise. They left here. Um, but I do like Jake Ottinger. Um, real solid goalie. Real bright future. Um, I think he'll definitely be winning some awards and probably some Stanley Cups in the future. So I got this one at a trade at a card show. Um, I traded a PSA 9 um, Jason Robertson, actually. Not a, not a Young Guns. Uh, OPG Platinum um, Jason Robertson. So it was a pretty fair trade. These are only about $20 value, but you get them to gem up their three figure cards easily so Jake Ottinger he is uh, going to come back and have another great year next year I just know it so that is the set that is 25 cards um, hopefully uh, our gem rate's pretty good I'll definitely be back and post a video on, on the gem rate um, I'll also get this vintage set set up submitted um, or at least get it in the submission pool go through the cards and then I'm going to probably wait until July see if they have a um, if they have any values or promotions going on vintage. The cool thing is you can plug them all in there on the PSA if you're setting up a submission. Um, and then if they change and make that promotion, you can actually go back to that first stage, switch that over to the promotion. It'll adjust all your prices for it. Um, so you'll get that discount on all your cards. So I like to just have those cards in there. I can add to them if I want to. 
um, but it's just ready. Um, then even if it doesn't hit this next uh, this next month, I'm probably gonna send those in anyways at the $19 an hour, but um, or $19 a card. But I would much rather send them in for four bucks cheaper. So hopefully you liked it. Um, we'll get back with the results, um, and then I'll get another video of a submission going here uh, in the future. So hopefully you liked it. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Check out my auctions, um, check out my sales, my slabs, com C, stuff like that. It's all linked in the uh, description down there um, or just right up on the banner of the YouTube page. So have a good one.